Okay, I bought a new uh, version of this video making uh, thing. I paid for it. Uh, well, you don't want to know that. You want to know about why, how, what this exciting video is going to be about. And this is going to be about kind of, it's another installment in our sculpting series. And you know, to get to the sculpting series, I'm kind of doing this. I have spent some time restructuring uh, the website. And if you go to the, some people don't seem to know this is the home tab. Maybe I've got to change that. But if you, uh, if you go to this lesson set that says comprehensive sculpting, notice I've got some uh, blanks here. Okay, and I've got to fill them in. Now I'm going to make the sculpting and the taxes in this one. So as with my new uh, big product offerings, you can, if you really fill all these in, I've tried to make it a little more structured. So um, uh, let me see. Uh, what I'm going to do is have you retype if you want to do this retype some of the things i'm doing i think that will be good practice and i'm going to explain how how this function works and now as we get more and more uh, complex where is the function just a minute sculpting this is this uh, ds sculpting tax uh, function okay uh, i'm going to uh, delete that okay and we will have you uh, do that and then I will also have you do the net operating loss uh, thing which I think is easy sorry to say that but it's a very fine and nice application of this uh, uh, minimum and maximum stuff okay and the real idea of this um, lesson is that now we're getting we're starting to get it complete we have different things we have the LC fees the letter of credit fees from a parent okay we have the months of the DSRA we have an interest rate of the DSRA we have all of these problems uh, including a tax rate that can cause real difficulties in this sculpting and and uh, debt sizing nightmare okay if you can see the next one is going to be using the DSRA as a as a, a, a maturity okay oops oh no Oh, God, these people call all the time on this stupid thing. Now I have to figure out how to stop this video. Shit. Oh, man, how do I stop this? Oh, here. here. When I received that phone call, I'm on another new phone, by the way. In the last video, I was on my fourth phone. I got one for uh, about 80 euros this time. Okay, it's not a flip phone. As if you give a crap. Okay, so we're going to this time put a depreciation rate because depreciation is going to be deducted for the uh, uh, tax calculations. And we'll also put a uh, IDC uh, percentage. Now I put uh, 1 divided by 20. And in fact, uh, this is semi-annual, isn't it? So we, I should have perhaps put a, a longer depreciation. Excuse me. So let's put a depreciation right now. You could structure this as an array and put in a, a, a changing or an accelerated depreciation. Uh, this is another set of videos I'm going to be handing out and working. I've worked on this horrible tax uh, uh, adjustments in these uh, U.S. Uh, uh, projects. Where you have accelerated depreciation, production tax credits, IDCs, I, ITCs, I, in, uh, investment tax credits, production t tax credits, and you have these limits, these limits on on giving the tax benefits out to a particular party, 
gets a little complicated. Okay, so that's our, those are our key inputs that we've added. Now those are going to have to go into the function, of course. Now the NOL balance should take about two minutes here. Up, oh, my left key isn't working properly. We put a maximum, and we this is just, and you put a minus always to, to, to and then you put a comma zero. That just says whenever it's a, a negative, switch it to a positive. And then you put a maximum, and you do something else when it's a positive. I hope I put zero there. But then w this one, we only, the maximum we can use is the minimum of the, of the opening balance. Okay. Okay, good. There we go. And the closing balance. I'm using the positive number convention. I learned from my classmates that this thing called F1, F9, well, I shouldn't tell you about my competition, but apparently they're, they're from Holland, so they're okay. Uh, and and they they uh, uh, um, so so the, when we make an adjustment, this is going to be the amount by which we add to the taxable income. Because see, we add this and subtract the next one, the use of the NOL, and then I should really have put adjusted EBT. Now, if you have, uh, you know this, if you have a, um, uh, a country where they limit the use of the NOL over a certain number of years, then you're going to, um, oh, shit, God, this left arrow thing is killing me. Uh, uh, damn. Sorry about swearing, but that I, I'm allowed to swear for that one. Okay, so there's our there are our adjusted uh, taxes. Okay, now then we have now let let let's put in a, a much lower ebby dot if I can find one. Can you help me find this? Ah, da, 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 da. Well, I can't seem to find it. Shoot. Operating cash flow. Well, so let's put it as 80. Let's put it as a really low level. Okay. So, oops. I have to put it at... Uh, uh, hmm. How about we'll, we'll make a... Uh, no, no, no. Let's, let's try this. 50. You know, it might be the fact that... And I might have to put a really, really high growth rate in here. Let's put um, 20%. Uh, 20%. That's a kind of absurd growth rate. <coughs> okay, excuse me, I'm getting there. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Mm. And I can't seem to get enough debt uh, capacity in here. I'm wasting your time, but I'm trying to get the NOL, this to be an NOL balance. So what I'm going to do is stop if I can't. No, I couldn't. I couldn't click it. Okay. Uh, just, just let me pause this. Let me see how to pause. Okay. I put an even higher growth rate in, and I have some uh, net operating loss. Uh, net operating losses here in the early uh, years. And we have zero taxes paid. And we have zero taxes paid um, afterwards, and this is the uh, lower taxes. And then eventually, when the NOL finishes, the closing balance finishes. We're we're we're, uh, we're finished. Okay. Now the other thing, <coughs> I've got to clear my throat. Excuse me if you find that irritating. I'm sure I would. I have to uh, put the depreciation rate. I don't have to do anything. The IDC rate and the depreciation rate. So we'll put this uh, rate in and corresponding to the normal kind of thing. Now, I'm a little bit afraid to do this, but the uh, project cost, we've got to add the, you know, DSRA and, and all of that there. On a, uh, and then I find this, but the, excuse me, uh, this, I'm going to add two lines, 
Okay, and we're going to put the add the IDC and I don't care stuff. Okay, and that that I said, well, let's just make that as a percentage of the debt. So that is this famous, famous, famous circularity from our other whole. There's probably one day going to be a course just on circularity due to funding. How exciting is that? I think it's really exciting. And then we take our, uh, we add all our costs together. So probably should have done this before. And this, this should have, have uh, been the total cost. Uh, times are nothing. Oh, oh, we have a circular reference. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, we're going to have to resolve that. And then we'll... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, another item. Another item where... It's, it's going to start to be easier, I think. I really do believe this. It's going to start to be easier just to put down here IDC in project cost. We have so many circularity circular references going. It starts to be like a cancer. I told you this. You start to have to add them over and over and over again. And then the interdependent. It still probably works. The, the copy and paste works okay. I'm not even going to do that. And then, uh, for the PFAD, yes, maximum debt to capital, we have all of this stuff, and we get down to our profit and loss statement, and I'm going to do something bad. I'm just going to uh, press F4. That's not bad, but I'm going to multiply that by the total uh, project cost, which uh, I'm Oh, and it didn't do that because of our famous circular reference. Okay, and uh, then we'll, uh, in here, I also deducted the depreciation expense. Okay, I added a line and then deducted it. Now, um, once you've uh, done all of this, then we're going to go to the function and just add these items just like we did. So this is the real, I should have started this. The theme of this is really how to take an existing function and just increase it and elaborate on it. Okay, and I'm going to, right now, I have to go, I tried this, I have to go, I have to go shopping. I hate it, I'm going to. Pause the video and do that in a minute. Okay, so, hmm. This is, uh, let's keep going, and now let's go through the function. Okay, now I've already done this, kind of tested it out. Uh, but the, uh, here are a couple of the changes we need to make. First of all, we need, we, okay, whatever, uh, the IDC, interest during construction can be defined that must be part of the iteration loop up here because it caused that uh, additional circular reference that we just found and then the project cost is is going to include the idc now when we uh, work through the, the the various issues then we'll go down to the Oh my gosh, the taxes. And when computing the taxes, whoops. I knew I forgot something. Aha. Hmm. Somewhere we need to compute the depreciation expense. Uh, and you see I subtracted the depreciation expense as part of the tax calculation. And... Mm hmm why can I not find oh here I put the depreciation expense as the base cost plus the IDC times the depreciation rate now what that means is we have to read it the depreciation rate and I should have also mentioned that we have to read the ITC IDC uh, percentage 
Okay. And we put the net operating loss in, and we just use this maximum and minimum the same way that was just discussed earlier in the uh, spreadsheet itself. And there's the maximum of the minus. It's exactly the same formula. And then we make our NOL adjustment. I made a little error on that when I did it first, by the way. And then we computed our tax we compute our taxes including the net operating loss adjustment okay and that's basically it so you know this was a whole lot less painful and a whole lot less difficult to verify once we had it built the rest of it's the same uh, with one exception we need to also output put an output for the interest during construction because it caused the uh, circular reference so now let's finish this up and to finish this up let's try I think this is a worthwhile thing to do I, this one I call total taxes I should have really mentioned that and then we can go to this one or press shift F3 and we go to the uh, we go to the first one which is the what we used I'll try to talk through this we use this debt period switch that just defined when we stop and when we uh, uh, define all the arrays and then uh, we define the cash flow and again I think I hope you can see now that this investment in m allowing you to take a whole row rather than to have to press the horrible F4s all the time um, is worthwhile. And then we have the DSRA periods. Then we have the input uh, DSRA. Then we have the uh, uh, base cost. Okay. Uh, and we better push this down just a bit. A little too much. The interest rate. Now that interest rate is, uh, I'm sorry, there's a little bit of background noise, but I don't think it's that bad. And then the maximum debt to capital uh, ratio. I'm just reading off this stuff, which is kind of silly, but the interest income rate. And I'm trying to hopefully show you that it's bad. It's a pain. You only have to really do it once, but it's not that bad because we're getting really now we're getting a lot of uh, variables and we're getting a lot of kind of uh, flexibility in this um, uh, model. And then we put the fee percentage for the letter of credit. Finally, the uh, income tax rate, I could use this, but I think it might be slightly better to use uh, this one. And the depreciation rate we're getting there. And the uh, IDC rate, which I hope that's IDC. And then we press Shift, Control, Enter. Now, oops. Oops. Ah, come on. I think it might be... That, remember what I did last time. I think what I did last time, I put one... Shift Control R, Shift <coughs> Control Right Arrow, F2, Shift Control Enter. And we better make sure that this um, amount of the IDC, this one, was causing the circular reference. So now we, we have this IDC in the project cost here. Okay, and we can start looking at a couple of the tests that we had, which is the interest income tax, the taxes. Oh, no, I got a problem with the taxes test. Okay. Okay, but the rest of them are, are looking okay. So that was basically okay. Of course, what I'm going to do now is pause the video. Oh, I can't do it there, can I? Okay. Okay, in case you care, the mistake was actually not in the function. The mistake was in the Excel. 
uh, model, the mistake. Notice how I use the, the kind of, uh, some kind of English past tense, as if it wasn't my mistake, if it was some just generic kind of weird mistake. Now, uh, the, I put this in the wrong place, of course. Um, and what I had done is add the DSCR into the depreciation base, which was incorrect. And so I fix this, and then it, oops, then we have the taxes paid. And then there's this little section of the tests. And the taxes paid that we computed in the sculpting function are exactly the same as the taxes paid <clears throat> uh, elsewhere. I suppose we could make one more check. Let's just make sure that this thing divided by the debt, and we better find the debt that really we used, um, which I have here, is the same. So, whoops, yeah, if I put 15% as the IDC, we get this. Now, fi to finally do this, this is kind of interesting. I switched the... the uh, uh, LC, and you get a pretty big difference. Now, if you, uh, this is when we have the DSCR constraint. If I put 1.2, switching it to the uh, debt to capital constraint, uh, actually, it still makes a big difference with this kind of uh, uh, assumptions. Okay, good, good. I think uh, that's it. Um, if we put a lower tax rate here. Uh, sorry, a higher tax rate. Let's make a DSCR constraint of 1.3. We can kind of see when we put the higher tax rate in, we're running into the DSCR constraint. When we put the lower tax rate, we've got so much cash flow, it's, it's pushing to the... Uh, uh, gearing constraint. Okay, so that's uh, the end of the video. Goodbye.